Hello everyone, welcome to my review of The House with the Clock in Its Walls. I give this film 6 out of 10 Smashing Pumpkins. The first thing I want to talk about in this film is Owen Vaccaro, if I pronounce his name right. It's the kid that's the lead actor in this film. And I just want to point out in the beginning, he does a really good job. I mean, he's supposed to be playing a 10 year old, I'm not sure how actually old he is. I didn't look up his actual age in real life. But he plays a kid that is super smart to the point where he reads a dictionary for fun and remembers words and he can switch from being a nerd to a scaredy cat you know when it makes sense like on a dime if he's feeling all right and comfortable and stuff like that then he'll say these big words and even explain to adults what the big words mean but if he gets scared by something or some action in the movie or like a bully happens he loses that he loses his cool and i think that's really really intriguing character moments is when this little kid could act you know scared and like turn down like his mental toughness and just breaks down and just turns into a normal kid i like that a lot and that's the first thing i want to point out the other thing i want to point out is that you have jack black's character and kate blanchett's characters plutonic totally plutonic love that you know I feel like ever since 2000, everyone says, oh, if there's a male and a female, well, they got to be together. Nope, this is strictly platonic. A lot of cracks at each other. Just good old friends. I love that. You know, nothing's forced. They're just good friends taking care of a kid together. Wait, that doesn't sound right. The lines between Black's character and Blanchett's character are very much something that I would say to my friends that I've had for a very long time in my life. It makes sense like the cracks and the jokes and the insults all really work and flow together but the main question of this film is is it really a kids film this film was directed by Eli Roth who has directed Hostel Knock Knock Cabin Fever and Death Wish on his IMDB page one of his trademarks is explicit explicit carnage and beautiful women and female nudity if that doesn't scream kids movie director, I don't know what does. Of course, this movie doesn't have female nudity, but it does have some weird images going on for a kids film. And don't get me wrong, it is a kids film. There's diarrhea jokes, there's slapstick humor that you'd see in any other kids films. It's just there's a lot of other things going on that breaks it away from it. As I mentioned, Jack Black is in this film. You know him from School of Rock, Tenacious D, and the Kung Fu Panda series. He is a mediocre warlock in this film his name is uncle jonathan Kate blanchett like i said we all know her from thor ragnarok she is her name's florence and she's the neighbor to jonathan and lewis who is the kid's name owen's name and the, the owen's character name kyle kyle mac lachlan is our villain isaac he's from twin peaks agents of shield inside out desperate housewives justice league the new frontier and how i met your mother and a lot of other things, and I knew him on all those things, and I was like, holy crap, that's him. The first thing to know about this film, it's a book adaptation. A book that I have not personally read. I just had to go off of about 20 or so different reviews that I read of people who have read the book, and I then read their review of the film, and a lot of them compared it to the book, obviously, as you do. There's a couple plot points that happen differently, you know, of course, just, just how Hollywood does it with books. Most seem it was rough down to Hollywood standards to fit this atypical kids movie, how it fits into the norm. And a lot of people got it negative because of that. The book, which this is based on and with the same title, was written by John Belairs, and it is part of a 12 book novel series, if you can believe that. This first book of his has 179 pages, which is what this movie was based on roughly. And with the movie only being 104 minutes long, that's about roughly 1.7 pages per minute of film, if that makes sense. Almost, almost two pages, well, 1.7 worth of a page, or pages, is put into one minute of film time. And for reference point, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone, wherever you come from, uh, you know, just being another book in a big series, a beginning book, it had, in the U.S. version at least, 309 pages with a runtime of 153 minutes, which equals almost directly on the dot, two pages per minute. What does all that mean? I don't know, but it was cool math and I wanted to do it and it sounds cool. 
intriguing and smart. When me and my girlfriend were leaving the cinema, she mentioned that it reminded this movie reminded her of a lot of Monster House and Mr. McGoran's Wonder Emporium. And then I added on that they had a love child and it was named Necromancy. Now you don't get that until you've seen the film, and I won't spoil a lot of things. But yes, necromancy is in this film. Blood magic is in this film. And at least in Harry Potter, they only did blood magic in two and four. Two and four and maybe six. I don't think Order of the Phoenix had blood magic that I can remember. Or in terms of magic that involved blood. I guess in Harry Potter it was a little bit more PG. Because I believe the first two Harry Potter films were PG. Hold on a second. Yep. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was PG, and the first one was PG, and Azkaban was PG. What a world we live in. But anyway, this was a weird PG. Because like I said, there's diarrhea jokes, there's slapstick humor that is very much what you would expect in a kid's movie. I mean, the diarrhea joke happens three times in the film, and all three times it happens, the same dialogue is said after it. You know, the first time it was kind of funny, the second time it was funny, and then the third time it's like, why did you do that? You know, it's it's the basic kid movie trope that you think a joke's going to hit and you keep on bringing it back throughout the film. But if the film was only an hour and like 40 minutes, yeah, maybe don't do that. But in this movie, there is also a prince of hell, a demon that has like a tongue that's like split in two and it licks up some dude's blood and it's all, it's just weird. I mean, when we left the theater, and this has crossed my heart, not lying to you i we were leaving the theater and a girl was talking to her mom and the mom's like well did you enjoy it and this is not a crack against the mom the mom had lots of kids with her you know so she couldn't notice that one kid that i know the kids sat the farthest away from the mom just because there was more kids and there were seats you know right next to the mom that's how it works but she was walking out she said oh i stopped watching this part because i got scared and then when i heard this going on i came back into it my mom's like, oh, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. And, I mean, holy crap, the kid's like nine or eight. You know, you can call her a scaredy cat all you want, but it's still a kid, and this is a kid's movie. Yeah, it's a Halloween, you know, type goosebumps kind of like kid's movie-esque thing or Monster House, like I mentioned. But still, it's just a lot of unnecessary things. And a lot of the things I saw uh, for the reviews that people that have read the book and watched the movie is that a lot of it was toned down. I don't understand like how this was a book. I mean, yeah, it was written in 1973, but still, I mean, man, come on. This movie has a ridiculous plot at the end. The beginning is fine. I like the beginning. The first bit of little Lewis or Owen's character trying to get through losing his parents and having to go live with his uncle. His uncle trying to deal with a certain, not to ruin the plot or anything, but a certain problem that's going on with the house and the house with the clock in its walls. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disconnect. He tries to connect. He tries it. Lewis also tries to connect with the kid in the class. And, you know, it's just typical kid stuff. And that's good stuff. That was all. I was all enjoying that. I was all getting up in there and enjoying that. But then I got to the third act and the necromancy happened. The Prince of Demon happened. There's talks about Alpha and the Omega and like deep Christianity of how like the end of times was coming. And just all this jazz going on, and then all these set pieces, and all this action, and like constant going at the end. Just, I mean, I feel as a kid, I'd be exhausted. I mean, geez, man, put on the brakes. End of the world machine, evil villains, necromancy, guy coming back from the dead. Just all this is going on really quickly. And a really weird CGI Jack Black baby scene happened, and was it necessary? Him peeing and doing all this stuff and almost dying? No. No, a lot of that happened. I was like, why are you doing this? Stop. <laughs> there was also an odd Holocaust reference or that or a stipulation that a character went through that and I get the emotional gravity of it. You know, I loved Operation Family, the last movie to come out that involved the Holocaust in some way. That's moving stuff, but you know, sometimes in movies you, f you feel like you're going to attach something like that to a movie and you're automatically going to get some brownie points for emotion and stuff. When in actuality it doesn't. It just seems forced upon when you could have still had the character had 
have a back background that has tragedy in it but don't stick it to something that you know might give you a free pass or even more emotion you know if it'd be like if i made a movie right now in 2018 and said this character had went through 9-11 or not went through it sorry if i made a movie in 2018 right now and said that a woman lost her kid in 9-11 that's just unnecessary Unless, you know, somehow you can make it convoluted to where it'll make sense in the film and not just add it on just to add on. But then you're essentially just having a 9-11 film, you know. So if you just tack on something like a quick one second thing to get that powerful oomph on it, then I don't think it's necessary or it's just unnecessary in a sense that you're just trying to get extra emotion out of someone or something. So I think that was a little bit extra and not necessary. There's also a shapeshifter in the film that is really creepy for kids. You know, I had a lot of screaming kids in my theater and I couldn't tell if it was because of tantrums or because of what was happening on screen. You know, I'll give it 50-50 for the benefit of the doubt. But it was still some messed up stuff. I was thinking like MI, you know, 6 or something like that. Mission Impossible was in. Any of the Mission Impossible films actually, not even any of the recent ones. But just where they would take off the face mask and it's just them, you know, Simon Pegg right there, or it's Tom Cruise right there. No, this is like someone twitching and having a, I don't know, an episodic episode or having a lung collapse and a heart attack and a leg cramp and debilitating movement syndrome. I don't know, all at the same time. It's freaky. I mean, yeah, it looked, it didn't really look too cool, but it was still... A concept that would be kind of interesting in a cheesy horror film but not in a kids film and that's what I don't like the most about this film that's why I give it a 6 out of 10 is because I don't like it when kids films don't really welcome in the kids aspect this could have been better than Goosebumps it had a solid story that you know could have happened and I know there's restrictions with the book but also seemed like the book also got gypped about a lot of things in good and bad ways for the sake of having a kids movie and for the sake of, you know, keeping with the book. Yeah, yeah. All in all, I think there could have been a lot better done with this film. I do like the kid actor. Owen was great. He portrayed Lewis really well, I thought. Jack Black is still Jack Black. I always will enjoy him. Kate was enjoyable at times, and other times I feel like she was still cashing it in, and a lot of other characters felt like they were cashing it in. Which, I mean, it's a kid's movie. I can't really blame them. But still. And there's a lot of effort that could have been placed musically, I think. But set pieces, it was great. All the clocks were making sense. I know the magic of the house was fun. But yeah, just all in all, it was just... Meh. You know, if your kid is... I'm not saying your kid has to be older than the teens. But definitely wouldn't take your five-year-old to this. As much as the ads make it seem like, oh, ha, ha, lol, pumpkin smashing... You know, like, lols, go see it. No, I I think the eight-year-old that I saw tell her mom that she was too scared might have been a scaredy cat a little bit, but I would still be debating if I was an adult and I actually had my own son or daughter, what is it going on and what age to show them that movie or something like that. But that's just me being a pessimist and, you know, hoping my kid doesn't turn into the spawn of Satan if you watch this film and to perform some necromancy. Uh, but that's it for me. I really hope you enjoy this. It's it's a weird movie to review Just in terms of its audience and just how it is so, But if you have any questions or comments or concerns about anything or have your own opinions Just let me know in the comments down below and remember I'm Clark Addison I review entertainment because I care and I'll see you guys in the next one Also the clock is at end